Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 95. Floor 95 is pretty simple for the most part. Essentially, Charles and everyone else that he spawns alongside of him cannot take increases in damage proportional to max health, essentially making Daydream Joker not really the best option, right? So it also kind of hinders one of my options here in Commander Lorena, but uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. Other than that, he's going to get fat barriers and you're just going to have to kill the adds that he spawns alongside of him. Let's talk about who we're actually playing. First up, Adventurer Raz. Shouldn't have to explain it at this point. Best PvE knight in the game. Arius is the artifact. Boots are speed main stat. Health percentage ring. Health percentage necklace. Effectiveness at 65 plus. As high level as you can get him. As awakened as you can get him. Pretty much get his entire skill tree. Super important. Healer is Tamarin. Best PvE unit in the entire game. Only needs to be level 50. Plus 1 in Shining Star. Plus 7 in Song of the Forest if you can for her skills. As for actually how to build her. Artifacts. Doesn't really matter too much. You can play whatever the heck you want. Boots are speed main stat. Whatever gives you the highest speed. Health percentage ring. Health percentage necklace. Ideally 4 piece speed set. Damage dealer. I decided to go with Commander Lorena. Although Red Sermia also works just fine. Or any other strong single target DPS that you want. That works fine. Just choose your highest level best single target DPS. And you are pretty much off to the races. I decided to go with Lorena. Because I really like the character. And I really kind of want to hammer home how good this character is in PvE. Level 60. 6 star Awoken. Artifact is not Daydream Joker. I decided to go with the Symbol of Unity. Because it is a freely available damage increasing artifact that everyone can get from their guild feel free to use whatever artifact you want that increases damage the gear that we are on is just the free gear that the game gives us from the dash pass event if you're watching this and the dash pass event is no longer available just use the attack set and the critical chance sets that you could get from the game's adventurous path as well as the various other free quests that they give you as a brand new player and then for our flex slot, I decided to showcase Camilla here because she is freely available from the game's connections and she is just monstrously powerful as you'll see in this actual run. If you don't know how she works, as long as she has the attack buff, her S1 turns into essentially Tamarin's S1 when she is in idle mode, causing a dual attack with your highest damaging character. As for how to build her, speed on the boots, uh, health or attack percentage on the ring, whatever you can get, just as long as she has a decent amount of bulk. And then the necklace, I went with critical hit damage to kind of help do a little bit of chip damage here. Artifact can be whatever you want. I'm using Midnight Bloom because it's a freely available artifact that you can get through the Book of Memories. But again, choose whatever you want in the slot. Doesn't really matter. As long as Camilla has like okay bulk, okay speed and can do some damage, it's not really going to matter. She just doubles as your second copy of your DPS. If you don't want to play Camilla, just play any other damage dealer that you want in the slot. It doesn't even really matter what you actually choose for this. Now, let's go and actually take a look at the fight in action. Alright, so the first floor is very similar to some of the ones we've done in the past. Just kill the adds, then slowly walk down the boss. Alright, so we S2 to take an extra turn and get attack buff on Camilla. And that'll turn our S1 into Lorena's S1. Since that's about to die, I'm going to work on another character. Use Spiral Breakthrough. S1 to kill this. S2 to heal up Lorena. This kills with Lorena. We can hold on Raz's S2 because we'll actually go through this fight pretty quickly. Surprisingly, this floor boss is pretty squishy. And now we just walk the boss down, trying to conserve our cooldowns where we can. The only cooldown you can pretty much freely use is Camilla's S2. Also, obviously, Tamarin's S2 to heal up the chip damage. Just don't, don't use your idol. Yeah, you can see that's a lot of damage if you get the defense break. Easily move on to floor two. So now you can pretty much have free reign on attacking Charles until he takes a turn. In which case he'll spawn Dien and Basque and get a massive barrier. 
So this is pretty much just open season to just hit him as hard as you can. It's probably possible if your gear is good enough to kill him before he even takes a turn. You could soul burn on this to guarantee that. Spiral breakthrough for big damage. Soul burn. You can see we are just ripping through him. Like he is already about to die. So now he'll use his S3, get a huge barrier, and spawn Dien and Bask. So we focus on Dien first. We're going to S3 at Raz to get defense buff. Also, since they're both blue units, his defense break, not as consistent. If he's your only defense breaker, you could go for the soul burn there. But since I have Camilla, I'm just going to soul burn into Dien. Spiral breakthrough. Might as well S2, because we're about to have idle anyway. I'll protect you. We can soul burn here to pick this up. And we start focusing down Basque. Go idle mode here. CR push everyone to the front. And soul burn again on Roz. And now we can focus on Charles and his barrier. And now he'll spawn on his second S3 here. He's going to end up spawning Crow as well as Corvus. So same strategy applies here. We're going to focus down Crow first. You have the option here to either Soul Burn into Corvus or Crow. Because Raz here is red, I would rather go for Corvus here. Alright, since we already got the defense break here, let's go for Corvus. Spiral Breakthrough. Push everybody up with Tamarin. Soul Burn again. All right, and now we can focus on Crow. For Crow, for I should say Charles, third S three here, he will defense break your team. I don't think it's anything really to worry about unless your Lorena gets stunned here. So now we can go S three in order to mitigate some of the damage. We could burn this one to get the defense break. We'll hold here on Roz. Spiral breakthrough here. And we idle here. And from here, we're going to finish off Crow, but you could, in theory, just blitz Charles at this point if you wanted to, to end it. Mm, let's go for Charles here. Because we can definitely kill on the Rena's turn. This is already dead. You can see, just the combat readiness pushes that you're getting out of Lorena are just insane. And there you go. That right there, that showcases the power of dual attacking in Abyss. Like, just having a three dual attack team is very powerful. If you have not already invested in Camilla, please do so. Because we will probably be using her as we climb into the higher and higher tiers of Abyss. 
A lot of strategies from like Abyss 110 onwards will be using characters like Camilla, Tamarin, Raz. So again, make sure you get those uh, leveled up early if you can. If you have any more questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And let me know if you have other alternative strategies to help out your fellow players in the comments below for Abyss Floor 95. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 96. Later now.